Hello everybody and welcome to today's video on the forms you might be asked to write in for AQA English Language Paper 2 Question 5. Now over the summer there was some confusion about this topic with lots of you messaging me asking if certain forms had been dropped and others added. Well I asked AQA about this and today I can give you the answer. The forms you might be asked to write in for Paper 2 Question 5 are Letter, Article, Text of a Speech, Essay, or text for a leaflet. Now that's the same as they've always been and the same as I've gone through in my past videos. Also, you will not be asked to write a blog. A lot of you asked me about that. I double checked that with AQA and that's what they told me. The exam board confirmed to me that the Further Insights document they put out a few years ago, which I've linked in the description, still stands. Now, the same document tells us that there is a minimum expectation of what you should use for each form and then a wider set of conventions that you could use. Now, I'm just going to paraphrase these here, but you can look them up in the AQA document and I do recommend that you do just that. So, at a minimum, when writing a letter, it should be clear that you're writing to someone. So, you might achieve that through a mode of address like Dear Mrs. Jones and some direct address with the personal pronoun you. You should also write in paragraphs. An article and the text for a leaflet should at minimum have a headline or title and should be written in paragraphs. The text for a speech should at a minimum be addressed to an audience and be broken into sections. An essay should at a minimum have an introduction and conclusion and should be written in paragraphs. So those are the basic expectations but you can take it further. For example with a letter you could do the whole thing of having your address, their address, the date, um, ending in your sincerely or faithfully, all of those conventions. And the question you might ask is, why would I ever want to go beyond the minimum expectations? And that's a good question with, I think, a couple of different answers. So the first thing is, if you go into the exam with just the minimum form features in mind, you could easily forget to use them. And I get messages from students after the exams every year where they say, oh no, I forgot to do this, does it matter, etc, etc. But if you go in with everything in mind, it might help make it stick more clearly in your brain. So let's take a letter for example. If you only think, okay, a letter needs to be clearly directed to someone, that's possibly going to be easier to forget than if you think about the addresses, the date, the greeting, the sign-off. Now the second thing to consider is that the form can help you get into the appropriate tone of writing. So the November 2018 exam question was a formal letter and the exam report said, and this is a paraphrase, I've linked the report in the description, those students who use the layout of the letter were able to showcase structural elements and set a fitting tone for the formal recipient. So the idea there was that thinking about the form actually helped with the rest of the answer. The November 2019 report made it clear that form is significant and it said, and again this is a paraphrase, the original is linked in the description, to achieve the higher marks it's necessary to show an understanding of the proper form and adjust the style fittingly for the question. Now why is that? Well, the mark scheme mentions tone, style and register and part of style is writing in the correct form. So this applies to those of you who are about to resit in November but also everybody in the exams going forward too. Now if you'd like more help on these forms, I cover each one in my English language guide which is now in its second edition and you can get a copy through following the links in the description. This is only a short video today but if you found it useful, please do subscribe to the channel.